Joining us now is David Martin. He is a chaired professor at the University of Delaware. David, thanks for being here. Thank you. We nice appreciate it. You are giving the MRS Communications lecture. That's right. Um, that kind of was brought on by uh, an article, right. a review article that you wrote. Right. Uh, how important are these articles? This is the inaugural lecture, so. <laughs> Yeah, I guess the jury's very still out, right? Sure. So uh, it was a very, uh, it was a great opportunity for me to be able to write that article mm -hmm. because I had just finished being uh, the department chair for five years and was getting back into the faculty ranks. And it was an opportunity for me to really sit down and take some time and look things over and think about it carefully and remarkably write the paper all by myself. Um, we faculty members, often appear on papers with many other people on them and they're really the people that are doing all the work mm -hmm. in the lab. And so this was one where I had an opportunity to just go in myself and dig it out and I really enjoyed, I needed that sort of as a catharsis. And I was going to say, you must be very again. proud that th this article has, has now come into a lecture here in the spring meeting. Yeah, I'm stunned. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, when you get into science, I think as a young scientist, I thought there would be lots of questions and people sending emails and things. Uh, there's really not as much of that as I had hoped. And sometimes you even wonder if anybody ever reads any articles that you write. Well, obviously so, they do. Well, and and let's talk. Let's let's preview this lecture. You're going to talk um, on molecular design, synthesis, characterization of conjugated polymers for interfacing right. electronic bio uh, medical devices with living tissue. Okay, right. now I just kind of went through that, but give us a quick preview. So my lab has really been focusing on materials for interfacing electronic devices of various sorts. Uh, that might include an implant to go in your ear or in your brain or in the eye. And all of these types of implants have some, time, some kind of electronic communication. So there's a metal or a semiconductor that's sending charge around. But living tissue is an electrolyte, basically. It's a salt solution with a lot of other organic materials in it. And so in looking at how to properly interface these electronic devices that are hard and rigid and crystalline with the body which is wet and soft and organized and alive. We have been looking at materials that are sort of in between both of those extremes. And these conjugated polymers are really interesting because they're electrically but also ionically active. They have materials properties that are sort of in between the hard metal and semiconductors and the soft tissue of the, of the body, and they can also be tailored into a lot of interesting, complicated microstructures, uh, porous films, fibrils, they can even be grown in the living tissue directly if you so inclined. Mm -hmm. And recently, even since this paper has come out, there have been a number of new studies that have looked at other implications. Um, some of my colleagues in Sweden have put these materials into plants and have made plants that it can even change color. That, so, that's what I was going to ask you about, some, yeah. some future discoveries in this field. Right, so that's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, we found that they are very well integrated into living systems, and the, this most recent living system is uh, a living plant. So they made a rose that could actually change its color uh, in the leaf on command when they put an electric current wow. in it. So it's, and <laughs> yeah, so, you know, when you stunning. think about, yeah, yeah. And, and there's all kinds of interesting implications about the future, integrating that into other types of, you know, plants and animals and who knows what, so. What kind of obstacles in, in this are there? I mean, I would imagine it, there's a laundry list that you can get around, but Absolutely. what are some of the ones that are prevalent? Well, I mean, one of the biggest one is if this is really going to be uh, useful for people, there has to be a lot of work done to be absolutely sure that it's safe, that they are well adhering to the surface, that there aren't any bad interactions when they go into the body. And um, before, I, I'm now at Delaware, but I used to be at the University of Michigan, mm -hmm. Before I left Ann Arbor, uh, a couple of my students worked with the tech transfer office and actually spun a small company off that uh, I, in interest of full disclosure, still have an interest in, sure. but I'm not in an active day-to-day -day role. Mm -hmm. And it's now still going, and they've been making a lot of progress commercializing or working to commercialize 
some of the applications that these materials might be in. But Beautiful. That's, I think well beyond the, mm -hmm. uh, an academic labs, uh, you know, that's something that's best put out into the commercial Great. sphere. Well, well, David, we'll enjoy your lecture. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.